I spoke to three AI experts who are part of a group of over 1,000 esteemed philosophers and scientists who signed an open letter calling for a pause of at least six months to AI development. In this video, we've compiled some of their answers to questions revolving around where AI is heading and what reasons there are for concern. Hello, I'm Jan Dallin. I am co-founder of Skype, uh, as well as the Cambridge Center for the Study of Existential Risk and Future Flight Institute. Hello there, I'm Nell Watson. I'm an ethics scientist and I work to help to make technology safer for everyone. Hi, my name is Vincent Conitzer. I'm a professor at Carnegie Mellon University in computer science. I'm also the head of technical AI engagement at the University of Oxford. So I'll start off today with the question, what has surprised you most in regards to recent AI developments? Uh, so I've been surprised recently many times by AI being able to do something that I thought would take a lot longer for AI to be able to do. I think in general, it's just very interesting that a lot of these systems work just by scaling up. And we have this phenomenon of emerging abilities where we have basically the same techniques, but as we scale them up with more data, more compute, and build larger and larger models, suddenly they can do things that they couldn't do before. Uh, one example of this is, for example, when we generate images, right, and most people at this point have seen these uh, technologies where you can put in a prompt and it will generate an image that matches that prompt. Uh, in the beginning, they would draw all kinds of things that didn't look very good. And one particular example would be that sometimes you might ask to write text into the image. Google had an example where they said, well, you know, draw a kangaroo that's holding a sign that says, welcome friends. And initially it would draw something like a kangaroo with a sign that had some things that resembled letters, but it didn't say welcome friends at all. And then it turns out that as you scale this model, the same model even, uh, at some point, it figures out how to write the text into the image precisely. And the interesting thing is that that's not really by design. It wasn't that they explicitly said, well, you know, we need to make sure that text occurs uh, in the image in the way that we want it to. Uh, they just scaled the model and somehow the ability to write the text exactly as uh, suggested into the image emerged. And this has been a phenomenon that we've seen many times that uh, some ability that the system didn't have before, suddenly it now attains just by scaling the model larger. And in this sense, it's really an experiment that we don't really know what abilities will emerge next. There are definitely many abilities that these systems don't have yet, um, but in many ways it's unpredictable. Could you briefly talk us through the three tiers of artificial intelligence? So starting with artificial narrow intelligence compared to artificial general intelligence, and then artificial super intelligence. Narrow artificial intelligence is something that we already sort of used to, like when I you know, pick up my phone and they recognize my face, that is application of narrow intelligence. Machine translation uh, for a long time used to be uh, narrow uh, AI. When it comes to general AI, it's kind of important to notice that like, as we have gotten more and more capable AI systems, they tend to be also more general. Like one interesting example is the difference between uh, deep minds alpha go uh, that was uh, playing go and alpha zero that was playing free games uh, at least free games uh, free board games including go so it was like a step up in both capabilities as well as uh, generality and when it comes to super intelligence uh, that is basically ai that is much more capable than humans are uh, in uh, possibly in every domain, uh, every intellectual domain, but more, more importantly, in kind of critical domains. Uh, and uh, when it comes to critical domains, the most important one is AI development itself. Once we have AI that is better, at hum better than humans in developing AI, we will shortly after have superhuman AI. What is the law of accelerating returns or this idea of human progress moving quicker and quicker as time goes on and how this relates to the progress that we're currently seeing in AI? We're at a very special time in human history. Until now, basically, almost all design or, or generation of new ideas has had to come from the human mind. But now we have machines who can begin to design for us. They can design new hardware to run themselves on, or they can optimize algorithms, perhaps that, that humans have not been able to optimize for 60 years. And so this means that we're seeing an accelerating return from 
our level of technological development. It's out of our grasp and it's kind of taking its own um, its own way forward beyond our control. Like one thing that is happening is that uh, the results of progress kind of keep feeding back to uh, the speed of progress, uh, not universally. So like there are clearly uh, areas in a, in a common in economy that have been stagnating, uh, sure. But uh, very importantly, in uh, semiconductors and in uh, in AI, that is not the case. Like the, uh, from what I hear, the latest uh, silicon chips are now made uh, with help from AI, uh, and AI itself was uh, was created using the previous generation of those uh, silicon chips. So you kind of see this. Uh, progress kind of feeding back on itself. And ultimately the ultimate situation or ultimate outcome of that, if you're not careful, will be uh, basically humans uh, being cut out of the loop. So like the, every subsequent generation uh, comes into existence without human intervention. Can you tell us what the AI alignment problem is? How we could get to the point where AI could potentially kill off humanity? So there's this notion of AI alignment where we're thinking about how to get the AI system to do the things that we really want it to do. So there are these futuristic scenarios that people describe where uh, somebody trains this uh, incredibly intelligent AI system and then gives it the objective to maximize the number of paper clips that it manufactures, right? Maybe this is a paper clip factory and the owner of the paper clip factory th says, well, you know, we'll just instruct this AI system to uh, manufacture as many paper clips as possible. Um, but unfortunately, what the owner didn't think about is that the way to maximize the number of paper clips is actually to take over the entire world and maybe take over the entire universe and turn everything into this giant paper clip factory, right? That was not the intent. Uh, and this is a little bit of what's sometimes called the King Midas problem, that it's very difficult to specify exactly what it is that you want. But machines don't always understand our intentions because language can be confusing. If we look at the the fiction books about um, Amelia Bodelia, she uh, she's like a like a maid in in a house, and she doesn't always understand instructions. She's told to put the lights out, and so she unscrews them and leaves them on the doorstep. Or perhaps she's asked to dust the furniture, and so she takes very fine dirt and spreads it everywhere. Right, aligning AI to what we want, and getting it to act in a way that is safe, not only for ourselves, but for society, is incredibly difficult. It's perhaps the greatest problem of our time. So what are the counter arguments to all this? It seems like AI is a very hyped up term right now, and I'm wondering if we could potentially be overestimating the risks. What are your thoughts on that? I think that in many ways, artificial intelligence can be compared with genetic engineering or nuclear power in the sense that they are technologies that a lot of people have deep concerns about because of their potential impact on the future of our society. So we should be cautious not to be too cautious about AI. There are great things that it can potentially bring to the world. And we don't want to kind of corner the, the future of development entirely, much as genetic engineering or nuclear sciences have largely been done in the last 50 years or so. So we want to find a balance, but definitely the balance at the moment is, is going too fast and we need to slow down as much as we can. Today's AI is not yet able to take over the world. Uh, actually, somebody built a system called Chaos GPT, whose explicit goal is to eliminate humanity. Uh, and fortunately, so far, it has not yet succeeded. So generally, this idea that AI is going to wipe out humanity or all life on the planet is very controversial because we don't really know how to think about those kinds of questions. So at this point, there is no system that can tell us, nor there's no experiment that can tell us what will happen if we have an AI system that is generally as intelligent as we are, because we just don't have that kind of a system yet. And that makes it very difficult to talk about the probabilities of these types of things happening and whether we should engage with this kind of a question. The yeah. silver lining is that... Uh... 
by being exposed uh, to these uh, dangers, uh, we are still dealing with with AI that is not superhuman, uh, that is not able to create like its own successors. Uh, so, like, uh, hopefully, by being exposed to those dangers, it's not going to be uh, walk in the park. Uh, but uh, uh, hopefully, we're just going to mature as a society as a result, and therefore, uh, kind of be able to face the next generation uh, in a much better shape. But again, we need time for that. What are your hopes with the pause on AI development? Is it solely about government initiated regulation kind of struggling to keep up with the pace of change and allowing time for it to catch up? Yeah, so what were we hoping that would happen in the six month pause? And I think we were hoping that lots of other things would catch up. One of them is government regulation, which I think has been moving uh, too slowly. It's hard uh, to, to come up with good regulation, especially for this very general purpose kind of technology. And it's interesting because many people, myself included, are very curious to see what the next model is going to be capable of doing, right? When a new model comes out, the first thing I want to do is play with it. Uh, and yet we feel that, well, this is just moving too fast and it's not good. In spite of our curiosity and in spite of wanting to see what the next model can in fact do, uh, we're worried that the other aspects are not catching up. Uh, another issue is, you know, how, how does society actually use it and how do we adapt to it, right? So some of these uh, deep fake uh, videos uh, and uh, voice imitation uh, and images, they're getting better so fast that people haven't had a chance to learn to deal with that, right? At some point, maybe we can't really just trust our eyes anymore and we have to think about where images are coming from, uh, but we haven't really had time as society to gradually get used to that. It's just been very quick. Um, so those are the kinds of issues where we would like to, in some ways, see things moving a little bit more slowly. Like it's not about kind of stopping AI in general. We definitely need, especially like research into into the current crop of of language models. What what can it do? Like what dangers are? How to avoid them? How to learn from it? From them, the the letter and the kind of the initiative is specifically kind of stopping the uh, stopping the training of the or generation of the next. Uh, next crop of uh, of large language models before we have had time to uh, adjust. Even though I'm, I do disagree with like a bunch of decisions that OpenAI has made, uh, like most notably like this, like release everything on internet, uh, but uh, and fuel the race. But I do give them credit for a both being kind of open about the dangers and uh, and also uh, there is merit in this in the strategy of like exposing. Uh, society to the to this kind of new technology so they could kind of uh, adjust. But again, it's important to uh, couple that strategy with giving society time. And I'm like very concerned that they might not.